Hello, 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 and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of our solar panel building series. I'm excited to share with you this exciting video series, now for the first time revealed for your benefit. Enjoy and look out for part three shortly. Go back to part one to enjoy this fully if you haven't done so already. Take a notebook and pen and start jotting away. It's awesome. See you at the end of the video and do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Case. You'll also need fine point needle nose pliers, which are good for crimping the tab wire. Also, some useful tools are a pencil or a marker and exacto knife. Then the carpenter square, which you'll use to make sure that you get 90 and 45 degree corners, and measuring tape to get the right measurements. In the remainder of this video, we'll go into the various materials you'll be using to construct your solar panel. The most important part of a solar panel is the individual cells. The cells are what turns the sun's energy into usable DC power, which we'll then convert into AC power. You can buy all different shapes and sizes for your solar cells. We're using standard cells that produce about 1.75 watts each. You can also purchase pre-tabbed cells. These cost a little bit more, but it means you don't need to tab each of the cells yourself. We're using untabbed cells, so you can see how to join each of the cells together. Next we have the bus wires which we'll be using to connect the cells at the ends of the strings and which will be connected to wires that exit the panel. You can use low gauge exit wires because the panel we're building won't produce much more than 3 amps and the voltage should not exceed much more than 18 volts. 5 amp wire should be fine and you can purchase this from any hardware store. Next, you'll need a junction box or a J box and a chase nipple through which the exit wires are going to come out of. When you have the panel all wired up, the exit wires will be live whenever the solar panel is in the sun. It's a good idea to wrap the ends of the exit wires in electric tape to prevent any chance of shorting out. Here we have some soldering flux. This will help the solder stick to the contacts. You can purchase this in bottles or as a flux pen. Next is the solder, which is a 60-40 rosin cord leaded solder mix. Then we have the silicone caulk, which is going to provide you with the best protection against the elements. The silicone caulk is used to seal up the solar panel to prevent any moisture getting into it, as this would reduce efficiency. Therefore, it's of utmost importance to make sure that the panel is nicely sealed up. And last but not least, a white acrylic sheet for the back, a clear acrylic sheet for the front of the panel, and a C-profile aluminum frame, which will ensure that the cells are protected from the elements. Some people use plywood for the backing of the panel. However, we do not recommend this if you plan on keeping the panel for a long time. Plywood will bend over time, moisture will work its way into the panel, and the solar cells will end up cracking. A plywood panel on the roof of a house will not last more than a few months, so if you're after something more durable, which I'm sure you are, use acrylic. Well, Hi, wasn't that awesome? Now go ahead and download a full, full video at tinyurl.com forward slash the solar project or alternatively um, look out for tomorrow. I may have the chance to upload the next video. It's, I'm in England now and it's very cold, but um, I'll do my best to upload the video as soon as I get a chance. If not, you've got a URL, tinyurl.com forward slash the solar project. See you there. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.